The CMA has yet again come out with a statement about the acquisition of Activision Blizzard by Microsoft, and it could paint trouble for Microsoft. Let's dive into why right now. Thank you so much for watching everybody hit that subscribe button hit that bell and if you're not caught up basically here is what has happened i have some notes here the cma is digging into the activision blizzard deal to see whether or not it will affect competition sony has publicly said that they are happy about this uh, sony has downplayed their lead in the industry They've also painted themselves as vulnerable if COD goes exclusive. Xbox has said ad nauseum that Call of Duty will not go exclusive and that it will remain multi-platform. And Xbox thinks the CMA is just using Sony's talking points. Now, if you want to go see a full breakdown of all of Microsoft's responses, you can go check out this video right here. But let's dive into the latest on this, and you can do that at the end of this piece of content. So we're going to be going through this very meaty document. Uh, this is the CMA and their response after the phase two investigation. They have opened it up for comments and comments are allowed through, I believe, the 28th of October. Here are some of the highlighted sections that I, I want to discuss today. So uh, in exercise of its duty under Section 36 of the Act, the CMA must decide what arrangements are in progress or in contemplation, which, if carried into effect, will result in the creation of a relevant merger situation, and if so, whether the creation of that relevant merger situation may be expected to result in substantial lessening of competition, we're going to see that SLC word a whole lot in this document, within any market or markets in the United Kingdom for goods and services. So they're sort of defining the terms up here. In this issue statement, we set out the main issues that are likely to consider, oh my God, <laughs> that we are likely to consider. Why is it scrolling so slow? Like all of a sudden it just started scrolling slow. I don't know what's up with that. Uh, in this issue statement, what is going on? In this issue statement, uh, we set out, see, it's just like jump, jump, jump. In this issue statement, we set out the main issues that we are likely to consider in reaching a decision on the SLC question, paragraph two above, having had regard to the evidence available to us at the date. We intend to use the evidence obtained during phase one investigation, but we will also be gathering and considering further evidence. We are publishing this statement to assist parties submitting evidence to our phase two investigation. So this is uh, what they have found that is concerning to them. They're going to be going over it in this document. And that is what we are right about to dive into. And I'm just going to fix this because I don't know why it's um, jumping like that. <laughs> Enable scrolling. Yeah, there, there we go. For some reason, scrolling got disabled. So anyway, hopping in here. In its phase one decision, the CMA found that the merger gave rise to a realistic prospect of a uh, substantial loss of competition as a result of vertical effects arising from Microsoft withholding or degrading Activision's content, including popular games such as COD from other consoles or multi-game subscription services, and Microsoft leveraging its broader ecosystem together with Activision's game catalog to strengthen network effect, raise barriers to entry, and ultimate foreclose rivals in cloud gaming services. Uh, in assessing a foreclosure theory of harm, the CMA's approach is to consider whether three cumulative conditions are satisfied. So they believe all three of these things need to happen. And uh, my, uh, I need to fix this really quick there. <laughs> uh, Ability, would the merged entity have the ability to use its control of inputs, input foreclosure, to restrict rivals access to a customer, customer foreclosure, to harm the competitiveness or incent incentive to compete of its rivals? Incentive, would it have the incentive actually to do so, i.e., would it be profitable? Effect. Would the foreclosure of these rivals substantially lessen overall competition? So they're sort of defining the terms of what they're looking for. 
In the phase one decision, the CMA found that there was a realistic prospect of, an, of a substantial loss of competition in gaming consoles together with their digital storefronts as a result of the merged entity engaging in a foreclosure in foreclosure strategies such as making Activision content unavailable on rival consoles, i.e. exclusive to Xbox. So exactly what Sony has been doing by doing exclusive betas, having exclusive... Sony's been doing this for a very long time. Uh, two, making Activision content available for release on rival console gaming platforms at a later date compared to Xbox, i.e. timed exclusivity. They said publicly that they're not going to do that. Uh, and they're willing to commit to that, I would imagine. Three, degrading the quality of Activision gaming content available to ri rival console gaming platforms. I can't imagine they would do that. Making features or upgrades of Activision games unavailable to other console gaming platforms, i.e. content exclusivity and or raising the wholesale price of Activision content on rivals consoles gaming platforms. Oh, Good news, CMA. Uh, Sony already did that. Uh, Activision also already did that. Both companies uh, like to charge $70 for their games. So you don't have to worry about Microsoft raising the prices on rival consoles. Uh, they're already doing that for themselves. So I, I don't think that seems to be uh, anything to be worried about, right? Anyway, uh, the CMA found that we're going to focus on specific points here that are interesting. B, Activision's content is an important input for PlayStation. An economically significant number of PlayStation gamers could switch to Xbox if Activision's content were no longer available or not available on equal terms on PlayStation. So what? <laughs> uh, they're not going to pull it off PlayStation, but you're saying if Xbox has exclusive content, then maybe people would switch. That's literally Sony's playbook. So I don't see the problem there uh, with that particular one. Um, that's exactly what Sony's doing. Anyway, in relation to incentive, the CMA found that finance, the financial modeling of the merger suggests that the merge entity's incentive to foreclose Sony may be considerably stronger than suggested by the parties. So the CMA is saying like, uh, Microsoft, you have a lot of incentive to foreclose on Sony more than you are letting on. And uh, yeah, of course they do. Microsoft past, okay, this one I disagree on. Microsoft's past business practices suggest that it may be willing to make losses in the short term in order to build scale and increase its user base. In particular, Microsoft has previously acquired publishers and made their upcoming games exclusive to Xbox even when those publishers had previously made their content available to all consoles. And two, Microsoft has uh, pursued this strategy when acquiring content that is far less valuable than Activision games and hence far less likely to divert customers to its console. I'm a little confused about this one because the CMA seems to be implying that Microsoft has made a game that never came out exclusive. They're alluding to the Bethesda deal, right? That they're willing to do that. They're gonna talk about it again a little bit later, but I feel like this is just incorrect. This is not This is not a correct statement. They previously made their content available to all consoles and Microsoft has pursued this strategy when acquiring, acquiring content that is far less valuable than Activision games. Content like what, Minecraft? You think? Minecraft is less valuable than Call of Duty? I would, I have to look at the numbers, but I have to say uh, Minecraft is still cross-platform and is very valuable to Microsoft. So I don't know what the CMA is alluding to there. If they want to say Bethesda, they should say it clearly, which they do later. But uh, yeah, Microsoft could engage in a partial foreclosure strategy, which would allow it to capture the most dedicated COG gamers, those who would switch to Xbox to benefit from enhanced content, interoperability, <laughs> or earlier releases. You're describing exactly what Sony is doing with Call of Duty. Sony has done all of those things with Call of Duty. They have exclusive things like skins on the PlayStation brand. You get exclusive access 
to the betas. Uh, and they've been doing this for years with the Call of Duty brands. This is like, it's insane to me that they're like, well, Microsoft might do this now. Might do what? Exactly what Sony did with the franchise when it was a third party? Uh, anyway. Whilst continuing to generate revenues from less dedicated PlayStation COG gamers who may not have switched to Xbox in response to a total foreclosure strategy. Okay. I don't understand how that's anti-competitive. If, if, if the concern is that Microsoft is going to do all the things that PlayStation has been doing, how is that anti-competitive when the, the brand that the CMA uh, clearly is worried about and defending is participating in, in exactly what they're describing. I feel like, like, shouldn't they be looking at Sony and what Sony has done and is doing with the call of duty franchise when in this conversation, I, I, I find it, I just don't understand why it would be negative if Xbox did that when Sony has been doing that. And there's a reason they're $5 billion ahead because they have implemented tactics like that. Anyway, continuing on the CMA did not identify any persuasive evidence that COD the CMA did not identify any persuasive evidence that Microsoft would be deterred from engaging in total or partial foreclosure strategies by the prospect of reputational damage to COD or Xbox. This statement, uh, they're just saying that they don't believe Xbox. They're like, we do not believe what you told us, basically. Uh, they continue on from here. And I think they, they might have had a, a point almost, and then they kind of blow it up. In relation to effect, the CMA focused on the impact of the merger on competition in the market for gaming consoles generally, not just on its impact on any specific competitor. Example, Sony. Sure. However, <laughs> in the next sentence, they're like, we're not worried about so in the next sentence. So they just said, we're not worried about somebody like Sony, but let's talk about Sony for a second. <laughs> However, since the CMA found that Sony is Microsoft's closest rival in a highly concentrated market for gaming consoles, the CMA <laughs> considered carefully the impact of the merger on Sony's competitiveness. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh i'm sorry maybe it's just because i'm tired and i'm recording this late at night but you did not just say we're not worried about sony but we really are worried about sony and we really listen to every single word that they said and we trust them the market leader about how vulnerable how vulnerable they would be if microsoft acquired activision blizzard you're telling me the guy <laughs> The guy who has been doing all this stuff, like blocking stuff from coming to Game Pass, not letting Game Pass come to their platform, uh, like <laughs> uh, having content exclusives from third parties locked on the PlayStation platform. You're going to listen to this guy who is pretending to be vulnerable and just say, we're not worried about Sony, but we're going to listen to everything that they said. You got like they have to look at Sony, right? It's such a strange uh, opposite reaction from what Brazil said. Brazil said, you're full of it. Like, <laughs> we don't care. And they, they moved on. And uh, the UK is like, we are really worried about uh, Sony's ability to compete if this goes through. Anyway, the impact of any foreclosure strategy on Sony may be particularly strong at the launch of the next generation of consoles when both new and existing users decide which console to buy. The CMA found, therefore, that a material impact on Sony's ability to compete would have a detrimental impact on overall competition in the market and ultimately harm consumers, example, through higher prices, reduced quality, or reduced innovation in games and gaming consoles. So the argument is you're worried that hypothetically uh the company might raise the price of their games they might reduce the quality of their products and then just stop innovating so is the argument that uh xbox raises their games from 60 to 70 dollars maybe and then maybe they could um i don't know reduce the quality of the components in their console and then sell that at also a higher price and then just stop innovating or is the argument 
that Sony will make worse games, increase their prices and stop innovating. Uh, the Sony argument is absolutely ridiculous, but what I just described uh, before that was everything that Sony has been doing this generation. They raised the price of their games, they reduced the quality of the components in their hardware and increased the prices of their console. And uh, yeah, no, uh, neither company would wanna reduce quality of their product or reduce innovation. Like the idea that Sony is gonna stop innovating is insane. Of course they're not, they're, they're, <laughs> they're just not going to do that. So, so that, that one was a little much for me. Uh, moving on, the CMA investigated whether the merged entity could harm Microsoft's rivals and lessen current and future competition in multi-game subscription services through strategies such as making Activision's content unavailable on rival multi-game subscription services, i.e. exclusive to Game Pass. Here's the thing, though. Game Pass is not locked to Xbox ecosystems. Game Pass is on Samsung televisions and you can play Game Pass on Samsung televisions. Game Pass uh, is integrated into Steam for a lot of games. Like I play Halo Infinite on Steam and it pops up a, a Game Pass notification and then I'm able to cross play on there and get my achievements or whatever. Uh, Game Pass, uh, I believe they're working with Steam to allow Game Pass to the app to be on, on the Steam Deck and, on, and integrated with Steam. It could also come to the PlayStation 5. And I know Xbox gamers would be very happy if PlayStation Plus came to Xbox. So this is entirely flawed in my opinion because I don't think the CMA understands that Game Pass is a, a service that doesn't have to live in the Xbox ecosystem. Sure, Xbox owns it, but those games could be on PlayStation via Game Pass if PlayStation let Game Pass come to their platform. Anyway. Making Activision's content available for release on rival multi-game subscription services at a later date compared to Microsoft subscription services, i.e. timed exclusivity, uh, degrading the quality of Activision's gaming content available to rival multi-game subscription services, making features or upgrades of Activision's games unavailable to other multi-game subscription services, i.e. content exclusivity, the thing Sony's been doing for years, uh, and or raising the wholesale price of Activision's content on rival multi-game subscription services oh boy so that, that's a lot but then they said in relation to ability the cma found that and the first few points are just sort of whatever but i highlighted the last one because i feel it's important multi-game subscription services are becoming increasingly important and activision's content would likely be available on those platforms in the future i don't see any indication of that happening i know black ops is available on multi multiple subscription services. I know a lot of Xbox owned properties are available on PlayStation subscription services. So uh, I, I don't know where they're getting that conclusion from. Activision's content may be as important to multi-game subscription services in the future as it is to consoles today on a buy to play basis. I would, yeah, I guess if it, if it went on Game Pass, yeah, that would be pretty important to Game Pass. Game Pass is already the strongest provider of multi-game subscription services. Absolutely. I think I think Game Pass is hard to beat. No matter how you cut it, Game Pass is great. Um, also, kind of a dig at PlayStation Plus, but you do you, CMA. <laughs> uh, here's one, though. Combining Activision's content with Game Pass could raise barriers to entry, entrench Microsoft's position as the leading provider of multi-game subscription services, and substantially reduce existing and potential competition. I don't, I don't know how doing that, having that on Game Pass, prevents somebody else from taking their exclusive IP and putting it on their subscription service. Like you're telling me. If Sony put Spider-Man on their subscription service or The Last of Us on their subscription service, that that somehow uh, wouldn't move the meter, so to speak. It, I, I don't think they realize how great Sony's IPs are and how they could leverage that for more subscribers. I know Sony knows that. I know Xbox knows that. But it seems that they uh, do not. The CMA does not. Uh, 
in relation to incentive, the CMA found that whatever, and then Microsoft has publicly stated that one of the most important reasons behind the merger is to add Activision's content to Game Pass to differ differentiate it from other multi-game subscription services, suggesting that it could have the incentive to make Activision content exclusive to Game Pass, except they've said so many times that they aren't going to make it exclusive to Game Pass. They could have exclusive skins or something on Game Pass, but they're not going to make Call of Duty exclusive to Game Pass. That's not a thing that they plan on doing. This one, CMA is totally busted on. Microsoft's first party titles are not available on any multi-game subscription services other than Game Pass, even where those titles are available for purchase on rival consoles. Interesting you would say that because actually Deathloop, Doom, two Fallout games, Prey, and Wolfenstein are all available on funny, funny you should ask where they're available. They're available on PlayStation Plus. Uh Deathloop, Doom. What else? What else did I say? The Fallout games are available. Uh Wolfenstein is available. There are plenty of games available on other subscription services that Microsoft owns, including Bethesda games. And Bethesda seemed to be one of the things that the CMA was the most concerned about. And I found that one very funny because clearly somebody didn't do their due diligence when making that statement because it is flat out false. Uh, let's So it's cited number 42. Can we go to that? 42. It's from their phase one decision. It looks like so. Yeah. Well, now I don't know where I am. <laughs> uh, yeah. So 42, it says uh, phase one decision, paragraph 227. Well, you're wrong. So you might want to stop saying that one. Third parties, <coughs> Sony, <coughs> Sony, third parties <clears throat> told the CMA that Microsoft would benefit from making Activision's content exclusive to Game Pass, and that this would be consistent with Microsoft's behavior in relation to past acquisitions, including that of ZeniMax Media, where Microsoft did not uphold its promise to continue making Bethesda content available on multiple stores and platforms. You know, except for uh, Deathloop, which remained multi-platform, uh, Doom, Fallout, Ghostwire Tokyo, Prey, Wolfenstein, Fallout 76, Elder Scrolls Online. Like, that is wrong. <laughs> also, Minecraft. They purchased uh, Mojang, and Minecraft is still on everything. This is a Sony, this is a Sony talking point. They're not even trying to hide it. Like, it's ridiculous. In my that's my opinion. Um most Game Pass rivals lack the popularity and range of content that Game Pass would own post-merger. Given the importance of Activision's content, current and future rivals could be affected by any foreclosure strategy using that content. So range of content, to me, it's not about how much content your service offers because honestly, Sony offers 700, 800 games, half of which are like streaming and they're great games. But like I said earlier, you're telling me if all the first party stuff went day and date, there wouldn't be an incentivization for users on the PlayStation brand to subscribe to that service. PlayStation plus extra being the example, they absolutely would. Xbox has said, we're going to make everything day and date. We know they made like $3 billion in 2021, and they're making deals with games like Arc 2 for about $2.5 million, leaving them a lot of headroom to pull other major titles onto the Game Pass subscription service. The, the narrative that that model does not work is wrong. And the CMA is pointing out that these are going to get more popular. More people are going to adapt these things in the future. So I think they kind of are, are incorrect in this statement here. And they kind of proved it earlier in the, in the conversation, in the document, sorry. Multi-game subscription services is a nascent market that exhibits both direct and indirect network effects, combining Game Pass as the strongest incumbent with Activision's important gaming catalog 
could substantially reduce competition as a result of total or partial foreclosure or a combination of both. This could raise barriers to entry, reduce the number of competitors to only one or a few providers, and significantly increase Microsoft's market power. The merger may cause this effect or at least accelerate this process, thereby depriving customers of a longer period of competition between platforms. That's just that's just wrong. Like even if even if Call of Duty did go exclu exclusive to the Xbox platform, Sony is still the best competitor. The thing that's going to happen are the stupid hand graph thing that I made like a year ago or that everybody gave me shit for, right? They're going to become closer to parity. And that is going to force them to compete in a better fashion, which is going to result in better things for customers. You really think that Sony raising the price of their games, Sony uh, reducing the cost of their hardware components, but increasing the prices in several territories. You think that stuff is good? You know why they've gotten to that point? Because nobody has been able to challenge them for years, not in the way that Microsoft is right now. And if the CMA blocks this, Sony will continue with these practices because nobody is there to say, hey, look at what we're doing. We have a really great option for you that you can bail to. Sony's gotten too comfortable and they need somebody to put the pressure on them. And Microsoft and Xbox will be that person if this deal goes through. We'll see what the CMA ends up coming up with though. Anyway, continuing on. At phase one, the CMA found that Microsoft already has an advantage First time I've heard that. I mean, if you look on the internet, anyway, <laughs> they continue on. At phase one, the CMA found that Microsoft already has an advantage over rival cloud gaming service providers due to its broad multi-product ecosystem, including a leading gaming console, a leading cloud platform, and the leading PC OS. And Microsoft could leverage this ecosystem together with Activision's gaming content to strengthen network effects, raise barriers to entry, and hence foreclose rivals in the cloud gaming service. So you're telling me because Microsoft didn't drop the ball that that's somehow anti-competitive PlayStation now launched in 2014. I'm just going to bring up some dates here really quick. PlayStation now launched in 2014 game pass didn't launch until 2017. Sony had a three year head start with subscription services like, like Game Pass. They had PlayStation Now, and they dropped the ball for three years. Game Pass comes along in 2017. Nobody really cared until about 2000, until about 2020, right? So three years later, 17, 18, 19, 20, it's been seven years since cloud services have been on the market total. Uh, Xbox has been on the market for three years. Sony has been on the market for seven years with their cloud streaming service. They don't do anything to improve it. It still has terrible lag. And uh, Xbox comes onto the scene around 2020. The, the story starts to shift. And then xCloud didn't enter the market until 2019. So if you think about PlayStation Now, which was streaming, launched in 14, xCloud launched in 19. That's a huge gap, five year gap of Sony being able to do research and figure out how to make their system work. They didn't. Xbox did, Microsoft did, and they offered a better product to their customers. You know why? Because Sony was so far ahead that Xbox had to come up with a different strategy and they did. And that's why <laughs> I, I think that this deal would have a positive impact on customers on the PlayStation side and on the Xbox side. I truly do. I think that Sony is so far ahead that they've gotten complacent and they don't feel like they need to compete in interesting ways. And, th and that's too bad because when they did, when the PlayStation 3 launched, we got MotorStorm, we got Resistance. We ended up getting The Last of Us, Last of Us by the end of that console cycle. We got amazing games. And when the PlayStation 4 launched, Xbox dropped the ball hard to the point that they almost ceased to exist and Sony ran away with it. And then I, I personally feel like they got a little bit greedy. Anyway, that's another video. Microsoft already has a large gaming library, though Xbox through Xbox Game Studios, which includes a collection of 24 first-party development studios. 
Sony also owns a lot of development studios and I actually pulled my data here, which note is this? So Sony owns 118 IPs. The Bungie deal has gone through. So that adds uh, three. So my calculation was they own about 121. Plus I think they've acquired two people since I did, since I did that video, meaning it's probably higher than 121 total uh, IPs like games. Microsoft has about 70 IPs that we know of that are either in development or being worked on with Activision. It puts them at 119. So Sony has 121. Microsoft would have 119 total IPs to work with. And of course, both of them will create new stuff into the future. So my question is, wouldn't that cause more competition? So the whole argument that CMA is trying to make is that this would cause anti-competitive behavior. And I think the exact opposite is true. I think if this deal goes through, Sony isn't going to do stuff like increase the price of consoles when people are strapped for cash. Sony isn't going to do stuff like further raise the prices of their games. They're going to look for better ways to offer better things to their customers like they already have because they know Microsoft has caught up significantly in the last several years. Anyway, absent the merger, rivals could still hope to compete against Microsoft. So <laughs> without the merger, there's still a chance you could compete against the company that's in dead last. Don't worry, everybody. If this doesn't go through, you're still going to be able to compete with the dead last place com company. <laughs> like, what is this statement? I laughed out loud when I, when I saw the statement. You hear that, Sony? There's still hope for you to keep your $5 billion profit lead. <laughs> over this terrifying rival who um, is still catching up. Anyway, I, <laughs> yeah, just reading it out loud, it's even funnier. Absent the merger, rivals could still hope to compete against Microsoft by offering a different value proposition that is stronger on at least some parameters of competition. For example, by offering a better gaming catalog at a lower price. Huh. You know who has a higher price for all their games? Sony. People would regard their games as, you know, some of the best games ever made. Microsoft is still working in that avenue, one of their one of their heavier criticisms. Maybe, oh my goodness, if Activision Blizzard is purchased by Microsoft, maybe Sony won't increase the price of their games anymore. Maybe they'll have to figure out better ways to market themselves to their customers. I, I feel like this statement, the CMA just proved their point that Sony needs somebody right at their level to be pushing them in the right way. Anyway, following the merger, it may be significantly more difficult for rivals to compete against Microsoft on any parameter of competition, as Microsoft would have by far the strongest integrated offering across cloud, computer OSs, and gaming content. The investment required by a competitor to develop an offering that could compete effectively with that of Microsoft could be significantly increased following the merger. Or, you know, Steam could just turn something on in two seconds. Or you, we could look at NVIDIA's massive library of stream games. It's just, I just feel like the CMA is so uninformed here. Anyway, they talk about, um, in addition, the CMA found that the merger could strengthen Microsoft's gaming ecosystem such that foreclosure strategies that may not have succeeded absent the merger could succeed after the merger, especially when developed in combination. These would could include gaming content, engaging in total or partial foreclosure strategies using the merged entities gaming content. So like making Call of Duty exclusive, they're saying. Azure, denying access to Microsoft's cloud platform to rival gaming service providers or offering it on worse terms, including price, location, and or processing power and Windows. Denying access to a Windows OS license or offering it on worse terms, including price. So you, you think that, you think that Microsoft is not going to let other people develop their games on Azure, the entire purpose of the soft, the cloud based thing. That doesn't make any sense. Taking away Windows OS device, like I, 
I don't think what they're describing is even legal. Like that's a discrimination suit almost. <laughs> um, so, so that one strains to me, but I don't have enough context there. But anyway, that, that was the response. It looks like there might be one more note here. Let me just look really quick. Uh, we have a few more things. Um, here, one second. Boom. Yeah, okay. So there's a few more notes. I just couldn't see it because of the way it was. So basically, we will also consider any relevant evidence submitted to us by the parties that the merger is likely to give rise to efficiencies that will embrace rivalry such that the merger may not be expected to result in a substantial loss of competition. I truly don't think it will. Like, I, I'm not going to write to them, but <laughs> I feel like a compelling case could be made uh, showcasing all of the things that Sony has participated in and how the Activision Blizzard acquisition could actually pressure them to offer better content and services to their customers. Uh, content they got down, services they still need a little bit of work on, but they've done tremendous work this last year. Should we conclude, so these are possible remedies and relevant customer benefits that might happen after this goes through. Should we conclude that the merger may be expected to result in a substantial loss of competition within one or more markets in the UK, we will consider whether, and if so, what remedies might be appropriate. So this is where they're saying, well, we need to consider what remedies might be appropriate to do this. If any considerations of possible remedies we may have regard to their effect on any relevant customer benefit that might be expected to arise as a result of the merger. And if so, what these benefits are likely, likely to be and which customers would benefit. And apparently you can write in and say whatever you want to them. They have their email in the publicly available document. Uh, statements are uh, allowed to be sent until Friday, the 20th of October, 2022. So that is like uh, not that far away, actually. Now, yesterday I said I would talk about what Sony would like to happen, and, and this is the statement that is largely what they're saying. Third-party views also covered the merged entity's ability to engage in partial foreclosure strategies. SIE told the CMA that even if COD games remained available on PlayStation following the merger, the merge entity would still be able to engage in partial foreclosure by increasing the differentiation between the versions of COD available on Xbox and PlayStation. According to SIE, gamers may expect that COD on Xbox will include extra content and enhanced interoperability, the word I can't say, with the console hardware. In addition to any benefits from membership in Xbox Game Pass, SIE submitted that these factors are likely to influence gamers' console of choice. They literally described exactly their strategy with Call of Duty specifically and exact behaviors that they've been engaging in. So they literally said, Xbox could do what we're doing and that would be bad. Uh, and then finally... I just wanted to call out Paul Tassi because uh, he had a really good one. My requirements to allow my mom to tuck me in. No vegetables at dinner. I get to watch two cartoons. Night light stays on. Because Sony is writing their own consent decree, basically, for the deal. And Paul had another one. He said, we must protect PlayStation gamers from the loss of exclusive Call of Duty tier skips if Microsoft takes over. He's pointing out that the whole thing is absolutely ridiculous. Like the comments that we're seeing are absolutely ridiculous. And uh, yeah, so that's his take on it. And those are the important parts of the response. I did not mean for this video to be 38 minutes long. Uh, that ended up being the time code for this record. I might have to break it up into two parts. So thank you so much for watching. Now, if you wanna see what Microsoft actually said in reply, you can actually do so up here. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that bell down here. Thank you so much to all the members. If you want to become a member, memberships are down there. But again, that video, okay, subscribe button, that video will be somewhere. It's somewhere on the screen right now. So if you want to see what Microsoft replied with yesterday and are likely going to reply publicly very soon about, you can check that out uh, in this video. And don't forget to subscribe. I'm going to get out of here. I'll see you for the next one. Bye for now, everybody.